Once upon a time in the serene but vibrant village of Yala, there lived a couple named Sonia and Nick. From the outside, their marriage appeared to be a storybook union, one that evoked admiration and envy among the villagers. Nick, a wealthy and handsome businessman, treated Sonia like a queen. He showered her with the finest silks, golden jewellery and rare gemstones from the markets beyond the village. Their grand home, with its polished wooden doors and clay-bricked walls, stood tall as a symbol of success and love, or so it seemed. Yet beneath this veil of splendour, their marriage was far from a bed of roses. Nick's heart burned with true affection for Sonia, but his love was unrequited. For Sonia, Nick was nothing more than a means to an end, a vessel for her greed and ambition. Her love for him was hollow, a mask she wore expertly in public, flashing bright smiles that concealed the darkness in her soul. Sonia's heart was as cold as a moonless night. She desired not Nick's affection, but the wealth that came with his name. She spent his riches freely, buying exotic perfumes, lavish garments, and the admiration of the villagers, who often whispered about her beauty and Nick's fortune. Little did they know the sinister lengths to which Sonia would go to maintain her grip on him. Nick, blind to Sonia's true nature, worshipped the ground she walked on. He was a man who believed that love, like the crops in his fields, needed only the right care to flourish. But Sonia, cunning and manipulative, knew that she could not hold Nick's devotion through affection alone. She feared that one day his eyes would open to the emptiness of her love, so she resorted to something far more sinister, something rooted in ancient and forbidden practices whispered among the village's old women. One moonless night, Sonia made her way to the dark, twisting paths of the forest where the wise old witch, Mbali, lived in a small, hidden hut. Mbali was feared and revered in equal measure. I want Nick to love me unconditionally, Sonia whispered, her voice barely audible over the crackling of Mbali's fire. Mbali gazed at Sonia through her wrinkled, knowing eyes and spoke in a low, raspy voice. Love cannot be forced, child, but devotion can. Are you willing to pay the price? Sonia's heart raced. Without hesitation, she nodded. The old woman handed Sonia a small flask with the instructions. Every month, take your blood, your woman's blood, and collect it in this vessel, and cook it into his food every day. He will never question you, never abandon you, but beware, such magic binds both ways. Sonia, now armed with the forbidden knowledge, returned to her grand home with a wicked grin. Each month, as her body obeyed nature's cycle, she secretly collected her blood and mixed it into the stews and soups she prepared for Nick. The thought of it made her shudder at first, but soon, the power it gave her erased any guilt she might have felt. Nick, unaware of the darkness that flavoured his meals, remained under her spell. His eyes never strayed from Sonia, and his mind, once sharp and calculating in business, dulled in her presence. He doted on her more and more, spending every waking moment tending to her whims. He became a shadow of his former self, walking through life in a fog, utterly devoted but unknowingly trapped. When Sonia realised the charm was working, her heart, already blackened by greed, turned even more cruel. Seeing Nick's unwavering devotion, she felt invincible, untouchable. She no longer needed to pretend to care for him, nor did she feel the need to keep up any appearance of love or respect. With Nick so deeply under her control, Sonia grew bold in her wickedness. It wasn't long before Sonia began to flaunt her cruelty in the most despicable ways. Night after night, she would bring different men into their home, strangers, travellers, and even some of the local men known to Nick. Without a shred of shame, she would lead them to the very bed she once shared with her husband, the bed that should have symbolised their union. Nick, caught in the web of Sonia's dark magic, could do nothing but watch, helpless. His heart ached, but he was powerless. The charm had rendered him incapable of jealousy or anger. Instead, 
Whenever Sonia brought one of her lovers home, Nick would simply excuse himself, his eyes downcast, and shuffle to another room. He would sit in silence, listening to the sounds of betrayal echo through the walls of their house, his soul crushed under the weight of the situation. After a while, when Sonia was done and her lover had left, Nick would return to their bedroom as though nothing had happened. He never questioned her. He never asked where she had been or with whom. All he knew was that his love for her grew stronger each day, no matter how much she humiliated him. Sonia, however, found new joy in her cruelty. Nick's devotion amused her and she relished the power she held over him. She never performed any wifely duties for him anymore, save for one, cooking his meals. She would prepare his favourite dishes, but not out of kindness or care. No, she did it only to ensure she could continue feeding him her menstrual blood, maintaining her grip over him. Each meal was laced with her vile concoction, a ritual she performed with increasing satisfaction. And while Nick's love for her grew, Sonia's disdain for him deepened. She no longer saw him as a person, but as a tool, a puppet. She would throw insults at him whenever she pleased, calling him every vile name she could think of. You're worthless, she would sneer, her voice dripping with venom. A spineless fool. Good for nothing but paying my bills and putting food on my table. Do you even have a shred of dignity left, or did I suck that out of you too? Nick, his heart aching but his mind trapped, would say nothing. He would take the insults in silence, his head bowed as if he deserved every word. Sonia would mock him, calling him a weak, pathetic excuse for a man. You can't even satisfy your own wife. Look at you, letting other men come into your home and take what should be yours. You're not a man, you're a coward, a disgusting worm. And yet, no matter how much she degraded him, Nick's love for her never wavered. He clung to the hope that one day, Sonia might love him in return. But Sonia had no such intentions. To her, Nick was nothing but a cash cow, a never-ending source of wealth. She would demand more and more from him, making him work long hours to keep up with her extravagant lifestyle. You think I care about your love? She would hiss at him, her eyes cold and empty. I don't need your love. All I need is your money. That's the only thing you're good for. And even then, you're barely enough. One sunny afternoon, Nick's mother, Cora, decided to surprise her son with an unannounced visit. She had been away in a neighbouring village for several months and had heard little from Nick. Her motherly instincts told her that something wasn't right. She missed her son dearly and wanted to see him, so she packed her things and made the long journey to Yala. When Cora arrived at Nick's grand home, she found no one at the door. After knocking a few times, the housekeeper opened and welcomed her warmly. Madam Cora, it's been so long, the housekeeper exclaimed. Cora smiled warmly, but her heart ached to see her son. Is Nick home? she asked. No, madam, he's still at work. Sonia isn't home either, the housekeeper responded. Cora sighed, relieved to have some time to rest. The housekeeper showed her to the guest bedroom, where she could relax while waiting for Nick to return. As Cora lay down, memories of Nick as a boy flooded her mind. He had always been so kind, so full of life. She hoped that Sonia was taking good care of him, though she had heard whispers in the village that troubled her. Slowly, her eyelids grew heavy, and soon she dozed off. Cora was suddenly startled awake by the sound of someone shouting. The voice was shrill, harsh and angry, echoing through the halls of the house. She sat up quickly, her heart pounding. What was going on? She could hear a woman's voice shouting words so vile that Cora could scarcely believe her ears. You're nothing but a pathetic excuse for a man, the voice screeched. You can't do anything right. Useless. You think all your money makes up for what a failure you are. Look at you. Weak, spineless, worthless. Cora's heart sank. She recognised the venomous voice as Sonia's. Anger began to boil within her. Without wasting a second, she threw on her sandals and rushed out of the guest room following the sound of the insults. As she turned the corner into the main hallway, she saw Sonia standing in front of Nick, her face twisted with rage. You disgust me, Nick, Sonia spat. You're nothing but my servant. 
You're not even a real man, just a cash cow, a walking bank account. I wish you'd disappear so I could live my life in peace. Nick stood there, silent, his shoulders hunched as if trying to make himself invisible. The words hit him like daggers, but his face remained passive, trapped under Sonia's spell. Cora's blood ran cold. Her heart raced as she took in the sight of her son, once so strong, now broken and humiliated. She could take it no longer. Stepping forward with the authority of a lioness, she bellowed, What is going on here? Who is this crazy woman insulting you? Sonia froze, her mouth hanging open in shock as she turned to see Cora standing in the doorway, her eyes blazing with fury. Nick, startled, looked up at his mother, his face pale and worn. Who do you think you are to speak to my son like this? Cora shouted, her voice shaking with anger. She strode toward them, her fists clenched. What kind of wife insults her husband like a common street woman? How dare you call my son useless? Sonia, for the first time in her life, looked afraid. She had never seen Nick's mother so angry. The house seemed to hold its breath as Cora glared at her, waiting for an explanation. Nick, what is this about? Cora demanded, her eyes now softening as they turned to her son. Why are you standing here, letting this woman talk to you like this? Nick opened his mouth to speak, but no words came. He didn't know how to explain, how to tell his mother that he was under Sonia's control in a way that even he didn't understand. He simply stood there, frozen, as Sonia fumbled for words. Um, I... It's nothing, Mama Cora, Sonia stammered, trying to regain her composure. We just had a little argument, that's all. It's nothing serious. Nothing serious, Cora repeated, her voice low and dangerous. Nothing serious, you say? I heard every word you said, calling him spineless, worthless, a failure. She took a step closer to Sonia, who backed away slightly. You think that's how a wife speaks to her husband? Sonia was silent, her eyes darting around the room, searching for an escape. But Cora wasn't finished. Nick is the one who built this home, the one who puts food on your table. And this is how you repay him, by bringing shame to his name? By treating him like a dog? Cora's voice shook with outrage. Sonia's face twisted in anger as she found her voice again. He deserves it, she shouted. He's useless to me. He can't even do what a real man is supposed to do. He's just here to pay for everything I want. I don't owe him anything. Cora's eyes blazed. She couldn't believe the words coming out of Sonia's mouth. You wicked woman, she spat. You have no shame. No respect. You may have trapped my son in this twisted relationship, but I won't stand by and let you destroy him. Nick, who had been silent through all of this, felt a strange stirring inside him. His mother's presence, her anger, had awakened something in him, a glimmer of the man he used to be. For the first time in years, he felt the tight grip that Sonia had on him loosen, if only just a little. Cora turned to her son, her voice softening. Nick, my son, you don't have to live like this. You don't have to let this woman destroy you. Nick looked into his mother's eyes, his voice trembling. I love her, Mum. Cora could hardly believe her ears. Her heart ached with disbelief. You love her? she asked, her voice rising. A woman who sees you as useless? A woman who brings other men into your home and insults you like this? Nick's expression hardened, a flicker of anger crossing his face. Don't talk to my dear wife like that, Mum, he snapped, his voice strained with emotion. Sonia is my wife and you have no right to speak against her. Cora stared at him, stunned. She had never seen her son like this, so distant, so defensive of a woman who clearly didn't care for him. Her lips trembled and then she took a deep breath, her mind racing. She had to wake him up to make him see the truth. By the way, Nick, Cora began, her tone turning sharp, I don't understand why you ever left Layla to be with this monstrous wife of yours. She spat the words, unable to hold back her contempt. Do you even take care of your two kids, the ones you had with Layla before you threw her and the children out like they were nothing? Nick's face went blank. 
Who is Layla? he asked, his voice devoid of recognition. Cora felt a jolt of shock course through her. What kind of question is this? she asked, her voice rising with disbelief. Have you forgotten Layla? The woman you married? The mother of your two children? How can you not remember? You were a family, Nick. She was a good wife, a caring mother. You threw her out without a second thought for this, this woman who treats you like dirt. Nick's expression remained empty, his brow furrowing in confusion. I don't know what you're talking about, he murmured, shaking his head slightly. Layla? Children? I've never had another wife besides Sonia. The blood drained from Cora's face as the gravity of the situation hit her. She stepped back, her eyes wide with horror. Nick, she whispered, her voice barely audible. What has happened to you? Her mind raced as she pieced things together. The forgetfulness, the way Nick had become so detached from his past, his utter devotion to Sonia despite her cruelty. This wasn't natural. Something dark was at play. Cora's heart pounded in her chest as she realised that her son was no longer himself. It was as if a fog had descended over Nick's memories, erasing the life he had before Sonia. Layla, his children, he didn't even know they existed anymore. And now he was trapped, bound to a woman who manipulated and controlled him through sinister means. Cora felt a wave of nausea rise in her throat. She had heard whispers in the village of dark magic, of women using foul methods to control their husbands, and now the pieces began to fall into place. Sonia had done something unspeakable to Nick, something evil. Nick, Cora said, her voice trembling. You have to believe me. Layla was your wife before Sonia. You have two children. You loved them, Nick. You were a different man then. But Nick shook his head his eyes clouded with confusion. I don't remember, Mum, he said quietly. I only know Sonia. She's the only one I've ever loved. Cora felt tears welling up in her eyes. Her son, her once vibrant and strong son, had been stripped of his very identity. He was a puppet in Sonia's hands and he didn't even realise it. But Cora was not one to give up easily. She would not let Sonia destroy her son's life any further. She would find a way to break whatever dark hold Sonia had over Nick, no matter what it took. With fire in her eyes, Cora swore to herself that she would bring her son back, even if she had to confront the evil head on. As soon as Nick left the house with Sonia for a business trip, Cora acted swiftly. She went to the village church and sought out the pastor, a man known for his powerful prayers and deep faith. Pastor Tunde listened intently as Cora recounted everything. Sonia's cruel behaviour, Nick's lost memories and his strange devotion to a woman who treated him like a slave. Pastor Tunde nodded gravely, his expression serious. It sounds like your son has been bewitched, he said softly. The enemy has used evil to destroy the life of your family, but fear not, for God is more powerful than any dark force. Cora's eyes brimmed with hope as Pastor Tunde assured her they could break the spell through prayer. They planned to do so in secret while Nick was away with Sonia. Pastor Tunde gathered a group of prayer warriors, people strong in faith who had dealt with spiritual battles before. Together, they prepared to confront the darkness. Two days later, when Nick returned home alone, Sonia had gone to visit a relative. Cora knew it was time. She welcomed her son warmly and told him to relax, not hinting at what was about to happen. She had asked the housekeeper to keep watch and ensure no one interrupted the session. That night, Pastor Tunda and his team arrived silently, entering the house through the back door to avoid attention. Nick was in his bedroom when the prayers began. At first, the pastor led a calm and gentle prayer, asking God to reveal what had been hidden and to restore what had been taken from Nick's mind and spirit. But as the prayers deepened, something changed in Nick. His body began to tremble, and sweat poured from his forehead. His eyes darted around the room, wild and frightened. Pastor Tunde's voice grew stronger as he prayed. In the name of Jesus, 
every evil force that has bound this man, I command you to release him now. Every charm, every curse be broken. Nick let out a groan, his face contorted in pain. I don't know what's happening, he murmured, clutching his head. My mind, it's so blurry. What is this? What's happening to me? The room filled with tension as Pastor Tunder continued. Every dark spirit that has stolen his memories, that has manipulated his mind and heart, we cast you out in Jesus' name. Nick, you will remember the truth. Suddenly, Nick let out a guttural scream, collapsing onto the floor. He writhed for a moment and then, as if a great weight had been lifted from him, his body went still. His breathing became calm and his eyes slowly opened. But this time, there was clarity in his gaze. Cora rushed to his side, tears streaming down her face. Nick, my son, she cried. Can you hear me? Do you remember? Nick looked up at her, his eyes filling with confusion and then realisation. Mum, he whispered, his voice hoarse. I... He paused and the memories came flooding back. Layla, my children, what have I done? Cora sobbed with relief. It wasn't you, Nick. You were under Sonia's spell. She bewitched you, made you forget everything, but God has delivered you. You're free now, my son. Nick sat up, his hands shaking as he held his mother's. He remembered everything, the love he once had for Layla, the birth of his children, and the day he had left them all behind for Sonia, as if a dark fog had clouded his mind, his heart filled with grief for the pain he had caused them. I need to see them, he said his voice firm with determination. I need to find Layla and the kids. Pastor Tunde smiled warmly. God has restored what was taken from you, Nick. Go and make things right. The very next day, Nick sought out Layla, who had been living in a nearby village with their two children. When he arrived at her modest home, he was greeted by two small faces staring up at him, confused but curious. Layla stood behind them, her eyes filled with pain and surprise. Nick, she said softly, unsure of what to say. What are you doing here? Tears filled Nick's eyes as he knelt before her. Layla, I have wronged you in ways I can't even begin to explain. I was under a spell, bewitched by Sonia. I didn't know what I was doing. I forgot everything, even you and our children. But now I remember. I am so, so sorry. Layla's face softened, her eyes brimming with tears. She had suffered greatly, but could see the sincerity in Nick's voice and the sorrow in his eyes. Though it would take time to heal the wounds, a part of her believed in the possibility of forgiveness. I don't know if things can ever be the same, Layla said, her voice trembling. But for the sake of our children, we can try. Nick embraced her, holding her tightly. I will spend the rest of my life making up for the pain I've caused, he promised. I'll be the husband and father you deserve. With time, Nick and Layla worked through the pain, rebuilding the life they once had. Sonia, exposed for her wickedness, left the village in disgrace, her power over Nick shattered. Cora, who had never lost faith in her son, watched as he was restored to his true self, a man full of love, honour and devotion to his family. The dark spell was broken and light returned to their lives.